We could use your help keeping the Omaha History Podcast going. Please consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month. Go to patreon.com slash Omaha. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N. It'll help pay the light bill. Welcome to the North Omaha History Podcast with noted author and historian Adam Fletcher Sassy. Each week, Adam takes you on a guided tour through Omaha's dynamic past. An African-American minister and his wife built a congregation in North Omaha that's credited with raising the community and fighting segregation. St. Philip the Deacon Episcopal Church and its pastor, John Albert Williams, and his wife, Lucinda. He also started a newspaper, eh, Adam? He did, Steve. He was a, a heck of a guy who did all kinds of things. In addition to starting a newspaper, he helped found the Omaha chapter of the NAACP. He advocated for civil rights on his own through letter writing and active advocacy for over 50 years. And he was involved in so many different things throughout North Omaha, it's hard to keep track of. But the church itself was something else. And so this is going to be the story of both Reverend John Albert Williams, his wife, Lucinda Gamble Williams and St. Philip the Deacon Episcopal Church. Let's let's just run through it all. It all started way back in the 1870s. You know, Omaha as a city has always been a very church city. There was a man who uh, came to Omaha on behalf of the Episcopal Church, Reverend Worthington. And Worthington himself became the bishop of the Omaha region for the Episcopals and really had a very active role throughout the city. He was a civic leader and all kinds of guided development in the city, guided investment in the city, brought in money from the east, all kinds of different things. And one of the things that he was responsible for was really getting the outreach and the ministry going to African-Americans in the city's north, near north side neighborhood. This all started in the 1860s and 70s when blacks started moving into Omaha in any significant numbers. As they did that, Reverend Worthington, who was a bishop by then, Bishop Worthington, decided that the near north side needed an African-American minister to serve their Episcopalians that were coming there to really build out a congregation. He chose a young man who came into Omaha and really started serving in St. Barnabas. St. Barnabas Church was down on uh, Florence Boulevard at about California Street. It was near today's East Campus at Creighton University. Reverend Williams was a young man. Uh, he was just born in 1866 and came to Omaha in the late 1870s, first to be a, an assistant at St. Barnabas and then to open up a congregation. The congregation opened under the guidance of the minister at St. Barnabas uh, and eventually was turned over to this young man who went ahead and raised the money and developed the relationships and really built out the possibilities of having a ministry right in the near north side. The church was called St. Philip the Deacon. Uh, St. Philip the Deacon was an uh, evangelist who appears in uh, the Acts of the Apostles in the Bible. Uh, he was really marked as being a very significant figure in the early church. But most importantly to this story, he was an Ethiopian uh, and is revered as being one of the primary figures in the early Bible uh, and one of the primary figures who really built out the church. But being uh, black and really that involved in the Christian faith, it's important among it was important for a long time among black Christians to recognize the role of St. Philip. And so they named this church in the near north side that was being developed for African-Americans. They named it St. Philip the Deacon Episcopal Church. Reverend John Albert Williams came to serve the church and actually built it out. Uh, he was the one who took the church from 15 members to 250 members within two years. He's, his dynamic preaching style and active engagement with the neighborhood uh, really built up the congregation very quickly and inspired a lot of people to become very involved. And when he did that, uh, he really stepped out and I think set a, a premise for black churches in North Omaha from then on in terms of success and that kind of thing. It was a very exciting time and place and lots was going on. 
Reverend Williams became very, very active throughout the community. He first began writing for a black newspaper called uh, The Enterprise in the 1890s. Now, that was the same time when Reverend Williams got money donated from enough people to have a church built for St. Philip the Deacon instead of just meeting in some ramshackle shack or trying to put together services here, there, and everywhere. Reverend Williams really got a church basically donated uh, the money for the church donated from the East Coast and uh, built an English style building. Uh, it's kind of an English Gothic uh, building. It was rough hue and stone and sat right on North 21st Street between Nicholas and Paul. Today, there's nothing in this space. Physically, there's nothing there, but it's just north of the old Omaha Public Schools warehouse building on Nicholas Street. That's part of the Nicholas Street Historic District. Anyway, uh, St. Philip's, the church itself got going and then. The reverend himself got very active and started building out the congregation, started developing different thing, different things throughout the neighborhood, and really uh, started building up what the church could be. He started his own newspaper, and it was called The Monitor, and while it ran for approximately 20 years, uh, Reverend Williams used it to teach the the lessons and really build out the advocacy to the African-American community in North Omaha, as well as to white people who happen to be, be reading the newspaper. Reverend Williams had a philosophy of positive development. He fought against racism very actively. He was a letter writer constantly. He's very educated. Uh, he was a Greek and Latin scholar and recognized for his voice, his writing voice, widely. He was actually the official secretary for the Omaha Episcopalian District um, and very, very involved in the church's leadership that way. Uh, but he also uh, used his advocacy to build out uh, this support among the African-American community for expanding civil rights. As he did that, uh, Reverend Williams became very involved in other activities. In the early part of the 20th century, he helped found what was called the Coronation Pageant for North Omaha. North Omaha's African-American community was segregated, of course, and Jim Crow kept blacks out of Exarban, which ironically was founded at Florence Boulevard and Burdett Street in the 1890s. So Williams got to see this ev evolution where Exarban was born to really boost the business, boost the social ties in North Omaha and then across the entire city. But then it was taken from North Omaha and disallowed blacks to be involved. So he started the coronation pageant with the idea that African-Americans should celebrate middle class existence, too. They should have things to tie together businesses, tie together social life and really uh, build the pride of the community. And so this pageant was started. Uh, the dances were held at the St. Philip's Church. Eventually, they moved over to the Dreamland Ballroom. They were held throughout the community eventually. And lots of folks got very, very involved and very, very invested in kind of securing that kind of middle class identity for blacks in the near north side community. But Reverend Williams was the one who really started that. In addition to the monitor, it was also in the in 1914, right in that same era when the monitor was born and booming, that Reverend Williams took responsibility for trying to start the NAACP in Omaha. The national organization had started in 1908, and it took a couple of years before they got to Omaha. They had a uh, chapter starter come to the city in 1911 and again in 1914. And Reverend Williams really took it upon himself to get it going. He got a lot of people signed up, but the national office refused Omaha's charter in 1914 and again in 1915 because the Omaha's charter members didn't include enough whites. The whole point of the NAACP was supposed to be blacks and whites working together for African American civil rights because they recognized the mutual benefit from having everybody involved. Reverend Williams stayed at it, though, and he started the chapter officially in 1919. And it was just in time for the lynching of Will Brown and all the hell that that brought on to Omaha. Reverend Williams, working with uh, other North Omaha leaders, including Harrison Pinkett, uh, went and advocated on behalf of Will Brown. But unfortunately, their advocacy was for not. And Will Brown was lynched. After the lynching, the NAACP stayed active, though, and became more popular, not less, and are still going strong today because Reverend Williams founded the organization all the way back in 1919 in Omaha. He stayed on. Along with him the whole time was his spectacular wife, who by 
just her accomplishments alone is one of the most significant figures in North Omaha history. Her name when she was born was Lucy Gamble. She was born in 1875 and became one of the first two African-American teachers in Omaha, Nebraska in the 1890s, uh, 1880s and 90s. Lucy Gamble was uh, the child of William and Evelyn Gamble, who were slaves in Alabama before they came to Omaha. Uh, Lucy was born in Lincoln in 1875, and the family moved to Omaha in 1880. Lucy went on to teach at the old Dodge School, once located at 11th and Dodge Streets. Uh, and when that changed, she, when that school eventually closed, she moved over to the Cass School. She taught white kids in both Dodge Street School and Cass School before the Omaha Public Schools decided that they wanted black teachers to teach black students and not white students. And so Lucy, in her time as a teacher, had that opportunity uh, to teach at these schools. She, en- she left teaching permanently in 1901. There was a tradition that classroom teachers had to be single. There wasn't a formal rule, but everybody understood that the deal was when you got married, you left the classroom. Lucy married Reverend Williams in 1901 and left teaching after that. Uh, she went on and eventually came back to Omaha Public Schools as an adult education teacher in the 1930s. But regardless, that was just the beginning of her community involvement. Throughout the years, she was involved with uh, the North Side YWCA, which was originally called the Negro Women's Christian Association. You got to understand, Steve, the YWCA was segregated at its beginning when it started. Again, the YWCA in Omaha, Nebraska was segregated when it started. So they opened a Negro Christian Women's Association in the near North Side, and Mrs. Williams was on the board. When that group decided that they needed to open the colored old folks home, which which we understand today as senior living centers, Lucy took the charge on that and she raised money and she joined the board and she was very active with colored old folks home, which stayed open for more than 50 years in North Omaha. Uh, She was also really involved at the church, at her husband's church, of course. I mean, as a pastor's wife, there were expectations and she took them on. She led Bible study classes for adults. She led Sunday school classes for children. She became the uh, choir director and stayed in that role for a long time and even served as a delegate from delegate from St. Philip's to the annual council of the uh, Episcopal Diocese of Nebraska. So in her activity, she really just kept on. Reverend Williams himself died in 1933. He had served his church for more than 40 years, and Mrs. Williams was right there by his side the entire time. After he died, she stayed active. At uh, St. Philip's 75th anniversary celebration, Mrs. Williams uh, was given flowers by Judge Elizabeth Pittman and recognized for 50 years of membership in the congregation, and it was a very exciting time. You know, the church continued. Mrs. Williams continued, and uh, things changed. Well, 1950s, when the church started to falter a bit, its leadership wasn't strong and things were changing around Omaha. The near north side was be white flight had happened and it was emptying out of white people quickly by the 1950s. And in the 60s, white people were almost entirely gone from the entire neighborhood around uh, St. Phillips. Now, St. Phillips was a black congregation with white members, but primarily black. But the congregation itself had a hard time sustaining as things moved along, uh, it was all the way in uh, 1948 when the city of Omaha decided that they wanted to redevelop Kellum School. Kellum School was a big old school building that was built in the 1890s, and it sat right on Paul Street. And uh, the school district decided that they wanted to do a new school and have a recreation center attached to it with a swimming pool. And in 1948, they demanded, the city of Omaha demanded that St. Philip surrender their building and rectory so they did and the church was the original church was demolished in 1949 they moved again to Binney street uh staying open uh, building a new church on Binney at 25th street it's a humble building that still stands today and uh from 1949 all the way into uh the late 1960s uh, St. Philip's sustained right there but it was late 60s with new housing laws that removed redlining that really allowed African-Americans to 
move out of the near north side, move out of North Omaha even, and go on. And they left. And St. Phillips began to empty out. Uh, during that same time period of the 1960s, there was another Episcopal church, a white Episcopal church located up by Miller Park, uh, 30th and Kansas Avenue, or 30th and Belvedere Boulevard, right at that intersection. That church was called St. John's Episcopal Church. It was an old white congregation that had moved further north and built this beautiful building right in the Belvedere neighborhood. And uh, by the late 1960s, they were experiencing white flight as well. So racial issues were chomping away at both of these Episcopal congregations in North Omaha. And by the late 70s, there was a plan to solve some of the problems for both churches by merging them together. It was 1986 when uh, St. Philip's merged with St. John's. St. Philip's closed its original building, or its fifth building by that point, and moved into St. John's church there at 30th and Belvedere. And today, St. Philip's Episcopal Church continues as part of St. John's, and today the whole church is called the Episcopal Church of the Resurrection, and it goes on. So in addition to those stories, Mrs. Williams stayed on at St. Philip's Church and was very busy and involved and active all the way until she died in 1956. The Reverend and Mrs. Williams were buried at Forest Lawn, and you can see their graves stood there today. And the signs of St. Philip's even continue now at the Episcopal Church of the Resurrection with their own history and legacy that's been left behind there. So if anybody's interested, you can learn more by visiting NorthOmahaHistory.com. I have biographies on both Reverend and Mrs. Williams, as well as on St. Philip the Deacon, and even the only history of the Omaha chapter of the NAACP that's online. So check it all out today and let me know what you think of this history of St. Philip the Deacon Episcopal Church. Thanks for listening to the North Omaha History Podcast with noted author and historian Adam Fletcher Sassy. Join us next week as Adam takes you on another guided tour through Omaha's dynamic past.